Hello to all of you St. Louis movie fans. I'm Dean Treadway of Movie Geeks United, and I'm also happily amongst the newest members of the Zeke Film team of writers. And I'm honored to be with you tonight to talk about Love and Friendship, the ninth entry in our collective top ten of 2016. I've been a fan of Whit Stillman's work ever since his 1990 debut, Metropolitan, which set the template for his subsequent movies, all of which examine with extremely dignified wit, the more troubled denizens of the privileged class. Since 1990, he's completed only four films, Barcelona, The Last Days of Disco, Damsels in Distress, and this newest one, which is not only his first costume-heavy period piece, but also his first literary adaptation, one that took him more than a decade to produce, and one that perfectly matches his urbane writing abilities with the classicism of past literary eras. Love and Friendship is based on Jane Austen's Lady Susan, a novella she penned in 1794, but which was left unpublished until 1871, over five decades after her death. Given that the piece's title character is a vastly more duplicitous and sociopathic person than any of Austen's more generous and romantic heroines in, say, Pride and Prejudice or Emma, it's no surprise that the author was reluctant to have the story published, but it stands today in a more cynical era as ideal material for the present day in that it holds her lead character's sly toyings with the truth in high regard as a necessary survival mechanism. It makes one wonder what Jane Austen learned about life in her later years. The lead character, Lady Susan Vernon, is played here with extreme verve by Kate Beckinsale, who like the rest of this marvelous cast, weaves her way into Austin's complex verbiage with athletic aplomb. She's a recent widow, probably after marrying a rich man who was way too old for her in the first place. And as the film starts, she's penniless, having squandered her inheritance away on frivolities. And now she's dependent on friends and relatives to provide her a place to lay her head as she concocts a new scheme to marry a man who's rich enough to help her continue her profligate way of life and yet clueless enough to allow her the freedom to carry on with another man who she finds more romantically attractive. On top of this, Lady Susan is preoccupied with marrying off her meek and moral daughter, Frederica, played by Morpheus Clark, to someone she considers a similarly viable catch. Throughout the film, Lady Susan cleverly manipulates a large cast of characters, playing on their jealousies and insecurities and prejudices, all the while trying to remain in their good graces as she protects her own shaky reputation. Her only true comrade in all of this is an American expatriate, played by Chloe Savini, whose character Alicia Johnson acts as a sympathetic sounding board to Lady Vernon's plans, even though their continued friendship threatens Alicia's stay in England, as her older husband so objects to this friendship that he's threatened to relocate the family to America to escape it. And Alicia sees this as kind of a death sentence. Love and Friendship is a deceptively complicated movie, one that I fear many viewers won't fully grasp on their first time around, in a way, I kind of lump it in there with Martin Scorsese's adaptation of Edith Wharton's The Age of Innocence, and in that it's a film with such a rich array of characters and such an incisive understanding of this maze-like way of life that's so vastly alien to us now that it takes us a few viewings of the piece to really grasp its deeper nuances. This very economical movie is a little more than 90 minutes long, so it's very short, and I've watched it three times now, and every time I've noticed more and more details that tickle me with their clever wordplay and wily character interactions. If you're expecting something as kind and romantic as Pride and Prejudice, you'll probably be disappointed because Love and Friendship is a film that really hooks into the difficulties of being a woman in a world that values females only as sex objects, baby makers, and homebodies, and really values men only as studs and breadwinners. Lady Susan, who's a person wholly ahead of her time, recognizes these limitations in society and is willing to subvert them in order to be happy. Uh, there are so many things to adore about love and friendship, but Whit Stillman's screenplay is chief among them. 
It's consistently funny and keeps things moving at a fast clip. Its attention to detail in the vernacular of its setting is ridiculously dazzling. If you're paying attention and if you have a wide vocabulary yourself, you'll probably be giggling madly at the surface of this costume drama that feels like kind of a subversive spoof of itself. I should note there is also a superb supporting performance in the film, one that should be in the conversation in this Oscar season. Tom Bennett plays a nervous, deeply unconfident suitor to Lady Susan and a wealthy man who's later put up as husband material to her own daughter. He's a character wholly unlike anyone we've ever seen in movies of this type. He's not entirely dumb, but he certainly approaches stupidity in his complete unpreparedness in presenting himself into an upper society that cleaves more acutely to accepted customs. I mean, just wait until you see the scene where he marvels at the peas on his plate, wondering what they are. It's, it's just nutty. Stiff and unsure, Bennett's character, Sir James Martin, doesn't know how to talk or even how to stand. His laugh is phony, his arms hang uncomfortably at his side, and uh, his attempts to spark conversations are devastatingly lame, and we find ourselves being overtly embarrassed for him. And in that way, because we're so surprised to see a character that can't navigate these surroundings in this type of movie, B Bennett really steals every scene he's in. He and Beckinsale both should resolutely be in the awards conversation this year, but I think Love and Friendship, since it was released in May of 2016, was probably seen too early to be remembered for such accolades, but you know, this doesn't really matter. I mean, it's still a great movie. Whit Stillman has emerged with a beautifully produced piece, especially when one considers the low budget with which he was certainly working. His skill effectively masks all of these limitations. The costumes, the photography, the art direction are perfect in their regalness. The score, composed of classical pieces, reminds one of Kubrick's Barry Lyndon. It, it even, unfortunately, uses some of the same classical pieces that were used in that film, uh, something that I really don't care for, since there's so much classical music for filmmakers to choose from. But that's a very minor sticking point for me. More importantly... The entire cast deserves to be considered as among the best ensembles of 2016. They really give it their all, and uh, they do so for a script that deserves our undying devotion. Love and Friendship is a movie that I feel will be raised in estimation once more people get a chance to see it again and again. It's really a cult film in the making, and if you haven't watched it yet... Do so immediately, but please be patient with it. The more patient you are, the more of its rewards you'll be able to mine. And so with that, I bid you farewell, keep watching movies, and thank you so much for listening and for reading Zeke Film.